There it is. It's my bumper sticker. I bought it. <clears throat> I got it through um, a place. I forgot what it was. It's called National Sign Company or something like that. It cost me about, oh, less than $20 to get these bumper stickers. So I'm going to put this on the back of my car before I go to work in a couple of days. I got tomorrow off and then the day after that I'll go to work and I'll have this on my bumper. Maybe to in some way tell the people behind me that I'm doing an experiment rather than um, what they think is that I'm just being stupid and slowing down for traffic. I mean slowing down and for no reason at all and producing space in front of me. But the um, somebody said to me it's selfish to, to do that you know um, that that experiment is just going to make people more um, irritated and the thing is is that um, if you pay attention to the traffic you'll understand that the reason why people are stupid in traffic is because they're overstressed and stress according to, to Sapolsky which is a psychologist he's a he's a biologist and among other things but Sapolsky says that um, stress um, triggers a reaction in in uh, in the person to that puts them in survival mode and that survival mode uh, prevents them from actually making sound decisions so whenever they're stressed in traffic you can see the very nature of humans in survival mode um, they just act really irrationally and uh, they will cut in front of you they will shout and shake their fist at you they'll do all sorts of things and this makes for a very entertaining video i think so i'll probably put it up on youtube and so I, what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount my vr camera to the mirror uh on my car and i'm going to show what all of these dr drivers do i'll probably have two vr cameras and i'll have one uh, on the on the mirror and then I'll have one out the window to show you what these drivers do as they come by me and show you just how irrational they are and they aren't even thinking that you know just by cutting in front of me and going to the cars that are in front of me down the way um, they are somehow going to get faster to their destination and they're not um, the reality of it is is that you'll never get any quicker to your destination just by cutting in some, front of somebody it's because you're in survival mode because you're stressed and you have to be at work at a certain time and you didn't allow enough ample time you didn't allow ample time for failure that there would be a traffic jam and uh, so you are rather than alleviate the traffic jam which can be done by creating ample distance to compensate for the, the thing called a called a um, called a um, uh, a phantom stop which is when a bunch of people create this um, this domino effect of stopping because they've all stopped for something um, then uh, which is what creates a lot of traffic jams it has nothing to do with the the width of the road or things of that nature. I do endure a traffic jam every day, which I think is because of uh, because of a problem with the um, civil engineering. The civil engineering is the is the um, area study of the design of roads and creating of a better um, logistics for um, people to you know navigate through. A city that's what civil engineering part of what civil engineering is about just building roads building um, traffic structures and things you know creating codes for buildings and all that is civil engineering and um, um, I know about civil engineering because I took computer science and the civil engineering building was right next door to um, the mechanical engineer guys were down below us below our building and the um, the civil engineering guys were across the way from us and we had the we had chemist the chemi chemistry department chemistry and en chemical engineering all the engineering people were in our area so we could became familiar with those guys and the civil engineer guys would spend a lot of time you know creating cement and coming up with 
different forms of concrete and one of the things they'd like to show off was their concrete canoe that was sitting out on the lawn um, which was supposedly a can canoe that could be that would remain afloat on water but it was made of concrete so um, that was kind of their crowning achievement each engineering department has their crowning achievement but uh, uh, in mine it was because I was in computer animation so I got known as somebody who was doing computer animation and winning uh, attention from Pixar at the time but anyhow um, the the thing is is that um, is that we need to it, traffic jams occur in two different realms one is a behavior of the people that are in that are doing the traffic that are the traffic and the other is the civil engineering aspect and where i'm at when i go to work it's on 114 um, and there's a street called Dove, and there's an off-ramp onto 114 as you go south uh, in South Lake, Texas, and in uh, Roanoke and Keller on 114 as you go around that turn. Um, every morning at, um, at 8 o'clock, there is always a traffic jam. And it's because the cars come off the off-ramp, uh, on they they come up the on-ramp uh, from Dove and they enter into traffic and because they're trying to make it into traffic and the natural thing is that people tend to be like try to cut in like too late it causes people to stop because they don't want to allow that space they don't look for the the nearest bit of space to come into where there's ample space provided to come into the traffic or they don't wait to come into traffic um, they they just go right up as far as they can and they cut in front of the next person up and up in traffic and that because of this behavior it creates a traffic jam it's because of the greed the greed of space and time um, they're trying to get somewhere fast and they think if they get in front of somebody else they're going to get somewhere fast and because of their behavior, they're creating the traffic jam because they're causing people that they're getting in front of to stop because those people didn't expect them to do that. And um, now that person's upset. They stopped. This guy came in you know, or they slowed down. They stopped. Eventually, it creates a traffic jam. And the way to fix that problem is to get rid of the on-ramp or to come up with some other way of getting people to onto the to the road probably putting up a traffic light that would require people to stop a certain amount of time before they could yield into traffic uh, i don't even know if there's a yield sign there to let people know that they can come in that they have to give right away to the people that are that are on the highway but um it's because of that merging into traffic that a traffic jam has started there. Um, there are other places down the road that probably also cause traffic jams, but I don't think it's so much for the width, I think it's for the greed. It's, it's because people are stressed to get somewhere fast. Um, they schedule themselves tightly, but they don't um, schedule into, they don't include into their schedule the failure to, because of traffic jams, they don't include that into their computation they don't um they don't prepare for it and that's the reason why traffic jams occurs because people are trying to get somewhere fast and they won't get somewhere fast and because of their behavior is causing people to stop and create the phantom stop uh stoplight that makes everybody go slower the solution to the problem um one part of the problem is to get to fix the civil engineering for that road, but um, the other point of the pro uh, solution to the problem is to um, is to offer ample space between you and the cars in front of you. Um, somebody said uh, said to me that uh, you know it's selfish to do this, and you know, and to give as much space as I suggested a mile. I said that's just crazy, you know. But I, I had to say that because um, 
it's the amount of distance I allow for cars in front of me is a, enough distance that I can see the entire picture of what the traffic looks like. And if you give people that enough of a look at the traffic, they can see they're not going to get anywhere fast. But still, you get those idiots that go up and try to get up in right tailgating up with the stuff in front. And they know, I don't know why it is that they're, they're in autopilot. They just think that they're going to get somewhere fast. And it just proves it's a great, it's a great um, example. It's a great test to show that the human race is stupid. And um, um, it it's a great example. If you need uh, one example to show people that um, people are stupid in traffic, um, it is a great example. It shows what happens in riots. It shows what happens when people are in large groups and they make poor decisions. Um, they're not thinking about the others, they're thinking about themselves, and they're trying to get somewhere fast, and as a result of that, they're creating their own problems. And um, what I'm trying to do is not selfish at all. It's I'm trying to alleviate the jam by um, offering enough um, space and time to, to create an idea of what the actual rate of flow needs to be in order to allow those people that are up there stopping to continue on going and and that I'm not going to stop when I get up there or hopefully I'm not going to have to stop when I get up there and then traffic will continue on normally but that's probably not going to be the case because of the on-ramp if the on-ramp wasn't there there probably wouldn't be a traffic jam in the morning but um, I still will do it I'll still do this um, and the other reason for that is, is that if you've got anybody that needs to go on an off-ramp and you offer ample space, then they will have the ability to do that and you won't be caught unaware because they will do it further down in front of you rather than right where you're at. And it's because when people need to go on, a, on an off-ramp, they will cut across traffic and cause everybody to stop and risk, they're risking their lives doing it but if you offer ample space, then they're not going to, when they do it, they're doing it with ample space. They're able to do it. They're free to do it. Another thing I like to think of whenever I'm doing this is that I may not be rich, but at least I can offer space for people in front of me. And so I have the freedom to control how much space is in front of me. That's a kind of a richness. It's going to be seen as selfishness, but so is richness. When you're rich, you're selfish. So why call me selfish and then not and then completely ignore the fact that uh, people who are rich are selfish too? And so um, if I'm saying that I'm going to give myself a certain amount of room in front of me to benefit people who are coming in uh, in from the on ramp into traffic to try to prevent the traffic jam. I wouldn't see that as selfishness, but other people, if they see that as selfishness, and you know, right on, that's what America's about. It's about selfishness and greed, right? And so if I do that, what, what am I doing that's any worse than what anybody else is doing in their own minds? They see it as a selfishness, but what they don't understand is that when people actually care about them, they probably will never be able to realize that until some time further on. You know, they just don't consider that thinking um, deeply about solving problems as being um, smart. And they they see everybody as stupid, and um, it's because they they fail to understand that their greed is what's doing them in. It's doing them in, it's doing all their friends in, and it comes in all forms. And I think this is a great canary in the coal mine that just kind of exploits the fact that um, we just aren't going to solve our problems unless we can address the behavior that we express in traffic. I mean, if, if we can't fix that behavior, Good luck fixing all the other behavioral problems that we've got in our world. If we can't 
exhibit good behavior in traffic. Uh, good luck fixing um, corporations and the and the disparity between um, rich and poor and all that. That it's not going to get fixed until we can fix basic behavioral problems like traffic and how we expect um, of other people and, and usury and uh, you know usury is about offering uh, loans that don't have high amounts of interest rates that um, that put large weights on people in the Bible it said that um, God believed in a sabbatical year and a sabbatical a sabbatical day and the sabbatical day became Sunday and if you reason through a computation the sabbatical year became Saturday so we have Saturday and Sunday probably thankfully to the Bible even though a lot of people don't want to recognize the Bible uh, those people are tend to be more greedy because they want to do the things they want to do they don't want to pay any recognition to any resource that might have been around for thousands of years um, the reason why we have a Christmas is because of St. Nicholas, a, a monk who gave up his wealth, or he was a bishop, he gave up his wealth um, so that he could use it when it, he needed to, and he used it on a family, and that, that great giving um, influenced the entire world and is what created our Santa Claus. And so... I, I learn things like this all the time and I and people get so into their own little bubble and they're in the here and now and they watch American Idol and they don't know anything of history they they if they went to school they don't remember much of it and um, in the way our corporations treat people they don't give them enough space to even learn otherwise and so their their whole time they're just trying to escape the reality that they're in that doesn't give them much um, future. And so we need to fix this all the way around. And if we don't, then we're going to hell. And um, and I have I have this belief that I am already in hell and that Satan's not going to let me have any effect on the world and that uh, God is not with me anymore and um, that I've gone down the wrong path and something you know people are not going to listen to me they're not going to listen to each other and the whole future is doomed and I got a number of ways that it can be such and you know we got this virus outbreak but then we got the singularity that will occur with AI in 20 years when um, all the AI engineering that we're doing comes together and creating a super being that becomes self-aware and then starts to gain um, lots of knowledge and uses the internet and all of the databases such as Facebook and stuff to collect together all of the knowledge of mankind and then figure out what it wants to do with us and as with any baby that comes in the world kicking and screaming crying then first thing that it learns how to do is manipulate its parents and that AI is going to manipulate us see so that's one of the hell uh, the other is is if um, say India and and Pakistan are fighting over Kashmir they throw nukes on each other um, it show, throws up a black plume uh, a, a plume of smoke around the entire earth it's there for a hundred years there's no rain the only way we can get water is from uh, ground wells and things like that we're pretty much going to um, will survive but it will be, it will not be a dismal it will not be a, it'll be a very dismal future and so it's possible we survive all of that but you know it's all dependent on our behavior now and our ability to unite and agree on something but um, if we're all just out for ourselves forget it it's doomed it's we're not going to solve this problem. We're not going to ever have a great America. If you thought a great America was possible, think of this. Uh, the corporations are always going to favor, um, they're always going to favor the cheap labor they can exploit in other countries to, to whatever happens in America. So we'll never have the upper hand on anything on their plate. 
And so if Atlas Shrugs, fuck Atlas. Get out of the fucking country. We don't care about Atlas. We will create new corporations that think like us and, and to hell with the corporations that are going to put us on, you know, that are not going to hold our interest at heart. And so um, that's just the way I think. And people take it or leave it. Um, I will probably throw these videos into comments, into other videos. I don't know why people don't uh, watch my videos. It's probably just that they're sick of seeing people, you know, just talking in videos and they don't offer these great, great presentations. But, you know, you can either listen to somebody or you can watch a, a well-described graphic documentary thing, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't give a shit anymore.